in the last video we already found expressions for these expected values. So this time we're going to focus on finding the expected value of p square for Zeno. So the formula for the expected value of p square is that we take the integral and then we integrate the wave function, we take the conjugate, and then we apply the momentum operator twice because it's p squared this time, and then we apply it to the wave function dx. And then as explained in the previous video, because of the conjugate sign, the t components of these two wave functions, they're going to cancel out. So in the end, we're going to be left with a slightly simpler expression. We have xi naught times this momentum operator squared xi naught dx. So recall that last time uh, we did this substitution to simplify our xi naught. So we change our xi naught into alpha times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So y, alpha was equal to m omega divided by pi h bar 1 fourth, and y was equal to square root of m omega divided by h bar times x. So we did this substitution last time to simplify our xi naught. So we're going to use this simplification again in this video. So we can further simplify this term uh, slightly uh, a little bit by pulling these constants out. So this just becomes negative h bar squared. And so you see that we're left with this one task. We need to integrate xi naught times the second derivative of xi naught dx. So in order to evaluate this integral over here, let's try to find what this, what this term should be equal to first. So now we're going to focus on finding the second derivative of xi naught. So uh, in order to find this, first of all, let us focus on the first derivative. And once again, I'm going to use this simplification over here. So I'm taking the derivative of alpha e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So the first step, I can pull out the constant, <coughs> and then I'm going to use the chain rule. So it becomes e to the power of negative y squared over 2, negative y dy dx. So this is just applying the chain rule. And uh, once again, recall that y is equal to this expression. So dy dx is just equal to the square root of m omega divided by h bar. So in the end, we get negative alpha m omega divided by h bar, which is the dy dx, times y e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So now we're going to take the second derivative. So when we're doing this, we can just pull out these constants. And then we're going to differentiate this term. So we're going to use the product rule. So we differentiate the y. It just becomes dy dx, e to the power of negative y squared over 2. And then we're going to retain the y and then differentiate this e term over here, which is pretty similar to what we just did. So we just use the chain rule again. So we have this big expression over here. So let's simplify this a bit. So of course we can pull out this dy dx, which is just this one big constant over here. So the second derivative of xi naught, that's equal to negative alpha m omega divided by h bar. So I'm just combining the dy dx with this constant over here. And then we have e to the power of negative y squared minus y squared times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. So there we have it. This is our term for the second derivative of xi naught. So now we can substitute it inside this expression to find this expected value. So let's do just that. So expression for the expected value, we call that it's equal to this. And if, uh, once again, let's uh, notice that everything over here is in terms of y. So I'm also going to have to do a substitution over here. So I'm going to make this in terms of dy. And then the substitution is rather straightforward. You see that dx is equal to the square root of h bar divided by m omega dy. So in the end, our integral becomes something like this. So xi naught, this is equal to alpha e to the power of negative y squared over 2. The second derivative, it's equal to negative alpha m omega divided by h bar e to the power of negative y squared over 2 minus y squared times e to the power of negative y squared over 2. And then dx is just h bar divided by m omega dy. So let's try to simplify this a bit by taking out the constants. So with this negative sign, they cancel out. 
uh, this H bar over here cancels out. So we can kind of pull the constants out. So we have these two alpha terms. So we have alpha square. We have m omega h bar. So these terms we've considered already. We also have this constant over here. So we can pull this out. So we've considered this as well. So in the end, inside the interval, we're left with this expression e to the power of negative y squared, because both of these, they multiply together, minus y squared e to the power of negative y squared, because once again, these two multiply together, dy. And if you recall, we actually solved these t uh, this integral in our last video. So we call that the integral from negative infinity to infinity for e to the power of negative y squared. That's just equal to the square root of pi. And then if you stick a y squared in front of the e term, it just becomes a square root of pi over 2. So I've shown you how to deal with this integral in the in the last video, so you can check up on that if you're if you're interested in why this is the case. So in the end, you see that this expected value of momentum squared can be simplified into something like this. So we have m omega h bar square root of h bar divided by m omega. So that's just these terms. Alpha square that's just equal to so we call that alpha is equal to m omega divided by pi h bar one four. So alpha squared is just equal to the square root of m omega divided by pi h bar. And then over here we have square root of pi minus the square root of pi divided by 2. So that's just square root of pi divided by 2. And here comes my favorite part. You just cancel things out. Square root of pi cancels out. h bar m omega. So in the end we are left with m omega h bar divided by 2. And this is your answer. This is the expected value of momentum squared.